So hi, this is Ahmed Al Busola. Today we're going to talk about a topic that is very, very frequent. I always get questions and many patients tend to be quite worried about that. And that topic is bloating. So what is bloating? It really depends. So some patients describe bloating as a increase in the size of the abdomen, a bulging of the abdomen. They say that suddenly my belly looks like, like I'm pregnant. Some people uh, refer to bloating as pain or, or even gas sometimes. So in general, if we talk about bloating, if we, if we talk about the increase in the size of the abdomen, that's what we call bloating. So what can cause bloating? There are several, several uh, uh, reasons that people may have bloating. First of all, anything that is inside the abdomen. So if the bloating is there and there all, all the time, so then you want to exclude things like, for example, tumors or anything like that. Uh, however, that bloating that comes after food is a little bit more, more, more specific, and that tends to be the most common type of bloating that people are concerned about. So bloating could be the, probably the most common type of bloating is, has to do with uh, reflexes. So what are the reflexes? Reflexes are basically, uh, so I don't know if you can see, this is a stomach, yeah? So the stomach, your stomach is the size of a small apple, believe it or not, but most of us can eat a one foot sandwich. Now the way you do this is not just by stretching the stomach. Actually, there are quite a lot of neural uh, reflexes. So you eat, then the food goes into a part of your stomach called the fundus. When you start stretching a little, a little bit, the, the, there are a lot of communication. Your stomach will start to tell your, your, the muscles of your, of your abdomen to relax. For example, there is something called the transverse abdominis or the corset muscle. This is not your six pack muscle. This is a muscle that lies, lies just behind it and its job is to keep your belly button closer to your spinal cord. It makes you flat, if that makes sense. Uh, sometimes these kind of reflexes can, so stretching the stomach a little bit, you know, it, it is natural to make space for the food. How do you make sp space for the food? You can change the position of the breathing muscle, the diaphragm, okay? So you make the chest smaller, the abdomen bigger. That's why some people say like, oh, they can't breathe very well. Uh, the, the heart start to race, things like that. Now, the other thing is that you relax some of the abdominal wall muscles. You send a signal, you actually make yourself, make dilate those muscles. So there is a bigger tummy in there for the food to come. And there are a lot of other things that they happen. So these are reflexes. Most of the time they are proportionate to the type, to the amount of food that you ate. So if you eat a small apple, you bloat only a little bit. If you eat a two food sandwich, then you bloat much, much more than that. So that is the, the proportionate type of bloating is what most people get, and it's natural, it's physiological, that is what is supposed to happen. Some people have problems with these kind of reflexes. You eat a little bit, and then your stomach interprets the two, three bites that you had as a one-foot sandwich, and then it starts to act as if it is a one-foot sandwich. So these are neural effects. These are quite difficult to fix, but there are some things around it that we can do. So that's one thing. The other potential cause of bloating is actually gas, gas formation. So, so sometimes you eat certain amount of food, they tend to be more uh, healthy, you know, vegetable rich kind of food, but there are quite a lot of fibers that they may fer ferment in there. Uh, now, or some sort of sugars, and this is when things like, you know, they, they say the low food map diet might be, might be healthy. Again, with diet, it's very difficult to have very strong scientific evidence because Trials means we have to blind people. You don't know what intervention you have. And it's very difficult to do that with diets. So gas, increased production of gas can be, can be a cause of bloating, but also storing or trapping the gas in certain places can cause more bloating. So if the gas gets trapped in some sort of corners in the bowel, it can stretch the bowel more and it causes reflexes and causes you to be more bloated, causes more pain. So it's not really just the amount of gas, it's where it is and where it is trapped. So that, that might also be a, a cause of bloating that, that we sometimes, uh, you know, work through. And see. Another very common cause is actually constipation. So constipated patients tend to have sluggish gut, more bacteria maybe in there, 
uh, more time for the bacteria in the bowel, which they are okay, they're good, they are, they are where supposed to be. But if you if you slow down the bowel, then you have more time to ferment, and that might cause more of bloating. Now, the other cause is weak transverse abdominis muscle. So this is the corset muscle that we took in the background, and these they tend to be in certain uh, body shapes in certain certain amounts, certain you know risk factors. For example, previous pregnancies, uh, you know, increased abdominal pressure. Uh, chronic constipation where you have to push quite a lot all the time. Uh, there are there are a few other with time, yeah. The transverse abdominis and there's something called the linea alba. The transverse abdominis, the corset muscles, actually two muscles that are joined together by a fibrous uh, substance, and that sometimes can become more lax. So there are a few things we look into when we talk about bloating. First of all, we need to to exclude the dangerous things. And after that, we need to actually place you in where are you, why, what is the most potential, what is the potential cause of your bloating. They tend to be more than one thing. And then we work on your diet, we work on your exercise, where sometimes we think about pelvic physiotherapy, uh, the type of food that you eat, some medications that may take away some of the gas uh, and uh, try to, to improve it and make, make your life a little bit better if possible. So if you this is this is a summary. If you have any questions, you let us know. We will see. We'll try our best to help you. And yeah, thank you very much.